is the Shadow Health and Social Care Minister, Andrew Gwynne. Andrew, morning to you. Thanks for joining us on Sky News Breakfast. Uh, let's start with those NHS strikes then and Stephen Barclay being accused of bullying nurses. Is he a bully? Well, look, uh, as Pat Cullen has said, she wants to be in the negotiating room, not the courtroom. And it's incumbent on the government to do all they can uh, to, uh, to avoid the situation that we're heading into. It's incumbent on them to pull every stop out to uh, negotiate with the Royal College of Nursing uh, and to get a settlement that uh, can find uh, a way through. There has to be compromise. We know that. But, uh, you know, really, um, Steve Barclay and Rishi Sunak have failed to sit down with the nurses until the 11th hour. So the failure, it really lands at the door of the Prime Minister and the Health Secretary here. Uh, and Mr Gwynne, would Labour be able to offer a pay rise above 5%? Well, look, it's not just about pay. Speaking to nurses, they are incredibly angry at the way the government has treated them. We're talking about a group of people here who were clapped during the pandemic. They are the heroes of the moment. Uh, and yet all the uh, problems that have stored up over the NHS, not just because of the pandemic, but because of years of Tory failure um, on the workforce and so on, it is about terms and conditions. It is about nurses feeling overwhelmed with work uh, because of those staff shortages. And the government has failed to address those things. Uh, there isn't a proper workforce strategy in place. And what we've said is that the Labour Party will prioritise these issues in government. We will make sure that the next generation of doctors, nurses, um, medical workers and staff support are there to support the current cohort of nurses in the NHS. That's the important thing, having a workforce strategy and a government that is determined to work with the existing staff to resolve the issues in the NHS. It's not just about pay, it's about terms, conditions and the workforce. But ultimately, you know, there are nurses that are having to work, perhaps second jobs, who are having to use food banks. What would Labour do specifically for pay? Well, of course, Labour's not in government. These are questions you need to level at Steve Barclay and Rishi Sunak. The, the fact is we are heading into another period of industrial action. Uh, the government has to properly focus on the issues that matter to the nurses uh, and uh, ensure that those issues are resolved. I've said so what a future a Labour rise? government... Well, I've said what a future Labour government would do. We would have worked uh, day and night to avert these strikes by sitting down at the earliest possible opportunity with the nursing unions uh, to work out a package that would be acceptable, not just on pay, but on terms and conditions, and more importantly, to solve the long-term issues of the workforce shortages in our NHS, because that goes to the very root of the issues uh, that are facing the nurses and their professional bodies right now. Uh, and what's your position on the strikes? Do you support them? I don't want to see uh, strikes in the NHS, but I understand the anger of those professionals that are taking the decision to go out on strike. Uh, I think that, you know, these uh, professionals in particular were talking about the nurses feel completely deflated. They feel completely um, unloved. And so it's incumbent on the government to sit down and find a practical solution, a way through this, so that we can rebuild our NHS and tackle the very real issues that need tackling, not least cutting those waiting times, cutting those waiting lists and uh, getting patients the care that they deserve and the care that they need. Uh, Mr Gwynne, I'd like to get your thoughts on Dominic Raab's resignation, if I may, um, particularly his resignation letter. Uh, was that apology enough? 
No. And quite frankly, it was shocking that he doubled down uh, on the report that was released into his behaviour. Look, um, there can be no place for bullying. And uh, there have been rumours permeating the, the corridors of Westminster for many, many months about Dominic Raab's uh, alleged behaviour in not just his current department, but previous departments. Um, people have blown the whistle on Dominic Raab's behaviour in those departments. There has been an independent investigation into Mr Raab, and he has been found to be a bully in some of those instances. Uh, I don't think he should have been given the privilege of resigning in his own terms. Actually, Rishi Sunak should have shown that leadership. Uh, he said when he came into Downing Street he would lead a government of integrity, and he's failed on his own terms. He should have sacked Dominic Raab. In fact, I'd go further. He knew the allegations. He knew uh, what was being said about Mr Raab. Uh, he probably shouldn't have appointed him as Deputy Prime Minister in the first place. How do you think political parties uh, can make sure that bullying doesn't happen in the future? Because there's a lot to be said about what's happening at the moment. Uh, but not many people are talking, I suppose, about those civil servants who some might say were very brave to come forward and voice their concerns. Absolutely. And I think we pride ourselves in the United Kingdom that we have an independent civil service, a permanent civil service that will um, serve the government of the day, irrespective of the party in power. And there will be some incredible civil servants that have served uh, the Labour governments of Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, gone on to serve the coalition governments of, uh, of David Cameron and Nick Clegg, and then gone on to serve the Conservative governments of David Cameron, of Theresa May, of Boris Johnson, of Liz Truss, very briefly, and now of Rishi Sunak, and have done so professionally, quite in contrast for, say, the uh, United States of America, where they are political appointments, and when that pendulum swings in politics, the civil service is cleared out, and a new set of civil servants are brought in to serve their political masters. I think it's an incredible system here in the United Kingdom, but ministers have to treat the civil servants with respect. It's right that they demand correct information from civil servants. It's right that they demand uh, the detail that they need to go about making the decisions in government, but to bully members of staff in any workplace, not just the civil service, is unacceptable. And ministers have an absolute duty to treat their civil servants in their departments with utmost respect and with professionalism. OK, uh, Andrew Gwynne, Shadow Health and Social Care Minister, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you.